Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at a Bluetooth speaker from Harman Kardon. Now this speaker is unlike any 360 Bluetooth speaker that I have ever seen. And in this review, we will be testing out the sound quality with a few songs. So without wasting much time, my name is Onyi and this is the Aura Studio 2. If you've seen a review of this speaker before and you just want to hear the sound quality, then just go ahead and skip to the time signature on the screen. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to disclose that this video is not sponsored. I purchased the speaker at full price to get you this review, so my thoughts and opinions are entirely personal. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, in the box you get four regional power cords, of course the US and the UK included. A quick start guide, safety and warranty sheet, and then the Bluetooth speaker. And at the time of recording this video, this whole unit will cost you about £249 in the UK. I suggest you check the links in the description to compare the prices just in case if they have changed. Also, I would like to point out that this speaker should not be mistaken for its older version, the Aura Plus, which costs significantly more. I would highlight the differences later on in this video, so stay tuned. The speaker itself weighs about 2.5 kilograms, so to me, I feel it's quite lightweight and easy to move around, and it's actually not as big as I originally thought it was. From the images that I've seen previously, I thought it was going to be much bigger, but surprisingly, it's actually a lot smaller and compact, and for me, I really like the size. Okay, let's take a look at the features. The first thing that makes this speaker to really stand out is the transparent dome. At first I wondered if it was glass, but having touched it now and I can tell you that it is not made of glass, but it feels more like a hard plastic. I'm not sure how durable it is, so just take precaution. Right at the top you have a reflex port for moving air and this helps with the bass response of the speaker. Now the speaker doesn't have any passive radiators like you would find on most recent Bluetooth speakers. So during the sound quality test, we're going to find out how good the bass is. The controls of this speaker are located right around this strip and all the buttons are completely touch responsive. Moving along the right side of the logo, you have the volume up and down buttons. Next, you have the call button for taking calls when you're connected to your phone. Then you have the Bluetooth button, the power button, and over on this side, you have the LED button for switching the ambient lights on and off. And over on the back side, you have an auxiliary port for connecting pretty much any other device with a 3.5mm headphone out. So things like your TV, your desktop PC, and even an Amazon Echo Dot, you can connect it via the auxiliary port. And then next to it, you have a micro USB for updating the firmware. And lastly, you have the power port for connecting your power brick. Under this fabric, you have six 1.5 inch high to mid range transducers, which are spaced right around this region to help it create this 360 effect. And right underneath the speaker, you have a 4.5 inch down facing subwoofer. Let's go ahead and switch this thing on. And to do that, you just need to tap and hold the power button for a few seconds. And as soon as it comes on, the first thing you notice is this ambient light and how it reflects all around the dome. I think I really like this effect. I'm sure it's going to look really great in low light. We're going to have a look at that later on in the sound quality test. Okay, now let's get this paired up with a phone. Pairing is quite easy. You just need to tap on the Bluetooth button on the speaker and then you can search and connect to it on your phone. Okay, now before we do the sound test, I would like to touch on the LED ring light. Now, the cool thing with this light is whenever you turn up the volume, either from the speaker itself or from your phone, the ring light kind of animates to give you an indication of your volume level. It's not major, but I think it's a really good idea and I really like it. Okay, I'm done talking for this speaker. I'm going to let it do the talking. It's time for the sound quality test, so put on your headphones for the best experience. And after the test, I would give my thoughts and comment on a few things. 
Okay, Aura, take it away. Just fight a little longer, my friend. It's all worth it in the end. But when you got nobody to turn to, just hold on and I'll find you. I'll find you. I'll find you. Just hold on and I'll find you. I'm hanging on by your thread. And all I'm clinging to is prayers. And every breath is like a battle. I feel like I ain't come prepared. And death's knocking on the front door. Pain's creeping through the back. Fears crawling through the windows. Waiting for them to attack. They say don't get bitter, get better. I'm working on switching them letters. But tell God I'ma need a whole lot of hope keeping it together. I'm smiling in everyone's face. I'm crying whenever they leave the room. They don't know the battle I face. They don't understand what I'm going through. The world trying to play with my soul. I'm just trying to find where to go. I'm trying to remember the way. I'm trying to get back to my home. But I can't do this on my own. That's why I'm just trusting in you. Hey. Whoa. No be say I de feel, but e wu be lo de, e wu re go bo ju e ni, a fe pe fe le pe o, o di sha di a si e, e ba mi ki ya mi o, a fe nu ba di she. Okay, as you just heard, the Aura Studio 2 really sounds amazing. The bass was very present and punchy, and depending on the song that you're playing, the subwoofer can really dig down to sub levels. However, not as much as bass heavy speakers that are out there though. I found that the vocals were very clear and crisp and pushed right to the front, and they don't sound muffled at all. The highs and mids were well balanced and the speaker does a good job to accentuate musical instruments like guitars and percussions which adds a lot of richness and depth to the music. In terms of loudness the speaker can really go loud. At the maximum volume the music remains intact, the bass was not distorting. However, depending on the song that you're playing, at the maximum volume I could hear some vibrations coming from the body of the speaker. I'm not sure why that was happening but it seems to me that it was because of the surface that I placed the speaker on. So I moved it to a more sturdy surface and the vibrations were gone. So if you plan to jam this speaker at maximum volume I suggest you isolate it from tins that can easily flutter and vibrate and put it on a very firm table with even surface. Now before I give my recommendations there are a few things I don't like about the Aura and first is that the speaker is not portable. It is classed as a home speaker, so a lack of internal batteries will mean that you will always need the power brick in order to run the speaker. Now this might not be a huge deal at first, but because of how cool this speaker looks, I kind of always wanted to sit on a table right in the center of the room. 
but having this power cable running from the back will almost force you to have this up against the wall in order to get the cables out of the way and as a result of that you don't fully enjoy the 360 experience and the second thing is the power saving mode now this speaker will completely power off after 30 minutes of no activity and you will have to physically push the button to have it come back on again now I personally think that time is quite short considering it doesn't have any internal batteries and there isn't any option to increase the timing if you wish to. So I again that's a personal thing that I've observed and uh, let me know what you think. Okay for those of you that would go out to pick this speaker up like I previously mentioned there are other versions that are very identical to the Aura Studio 2. So here are some differences. The Aura Studio 2 has Bluetooth only, but the Aura Plus has built-in Wi-Fi and it's able to connect via Apple AirPlay and costs significantly more. And the second difference is at the time of this video, the Aura Studio 2 is the only one that has the ambient lighting. The others only have the ring light at the top of the turbine. Okay, now the third and major difference is the Aura Studio 2 has the ability to be paired up with the second one. So you can have a stereo sound or you can create a wider 360 effect or have the speaker spaced out across your home. Okay, so would I recommend this speaker to anyone? And I would say yes, I would definitely recommend this despite all the things that I have mentioned. One is because of the very unique design. I mean, there's really no other speaker that looks like it on the market today. And the second thing is because of the very surprising sound. I, I never thought that a such sound could come out of a speaker that looks like this. Now for 250 pounds, I think it's a bit on the pricey side. But if you decide to get this speaker, then you're not just paying for yet another Bluetooth speaker. You're paying for a very unique design. And also you're paying for a great product from a well-established company. Again, I wasn't sponsored to make this video. And that's it guys, I'd like to know what you think about this speaker. Would you consider buying one? Or if you currently own one, let me know your experiences. Or if you have any questions about this speaker, please drop me a comment. And also, if there's any speaker you would like me to test, please let me know in the comment section. And if you like this video, then please hit the like button, subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you know when I upload anything new. And until next time, my name is Onyi with OC Man Media. And I will see you in the next video.